Well, thank you for attending our SBIR introductory seminar. Uh, my name is John Uveri. I'm the SBIR Program Specialist with the North Carolina Small Business and Technology Development Center. Today we'll be talking about program specifics for the SBIR program. SBIR stands for Small Business Innovation Research. We'll be talking about exactly what is SBIR and STTR. Who is eligible? Because there are some eligibility criteria that you must meet. Uh, we'll talk about subcontracting and how that fits into uh, potential projects. We'll talk about solicitation searches. That is a key step and a key first step in your project. We'll discuss SBTDC assistance and how myself and my colleagues can assist you as you go through the SBIR process. And we'll close out with a discussion of the North Carolina Incentive and Matching Funds Program that's administered by the Department of Commerce and specifically the Board of Science and Technology. And to close, we'll provide my contact information. Here's a map of the North Carolina SBTDC's centers across the state. Uh, located in the uh, yellow circle is my office, which is in Chapel Hill. And the three other locations are our technology counselors in Greensboro, Raleigh, and Greenville. And we're all here to assist as you go through the SBIR process. So brief history of the SBIR program. Federal agencies with over $100 million in R&D budgets are required to participate. So you can think of this as a 2.5% tax on the largest federal funding agencies. That 2.5% from across the 11 agencies that participates equates to roughly $2.5 billion annually. Since the program started back in 1983, over $16 billion has been awarded through roughly 70,000 unique awards. About a million and a half people are employed by SBIR companies. Of the companies that have garnered SBIR dollars, about one in nine have gotten equity funding. That point is very significant. Companies that go for SBIR funding are much, much more likely to get equity financing than companies that simply go into the program without having gotten SBIR funding. Companies that have not gotten SBIR funding that go after equity financing, their success rates are uh, much, much lower. One in 500, okay? So one in nine is, is a pretty significant ratio. Of the currently SBIR funded companies in which $3 billion of government funding is at work, that $3 billion is likely going to be leveraged into $35 billion in equity financing. So quite significant, quite a significant economic impact, if you will, that the SBIR program has. STTR stands for Small Business Technology Transfer Program. Only the five largest federal agencies are required to participate. Their participation entails putting 3.5% of their extramural R&D budget aside. And that currently equates to roughly $150 million annually. So you can see that STTR, much smaller program than SBIR, and we'll talk about the differences in how SBIR may fit into your strategy, your funding strategy, uh, momentarily. Both the SBIR and the STTR programs are broken into three phases. Phase one is to carry out a feasibility study, also known as a proof of concept study. Roughly $100,000 and six months of time are provided to carry out this feasibility study. STTR, a little bit different, provides roughly 12 months to carry out this study. Win rates for a phase one, SBIR and an STTR are roughly one in eight to one in 10. Okay, so you're looking at a, a 10 to 14% win rate. If you've been successful in proving feasibility, 
you move on to phase two. Phase two requires another proposal to be submitted to that agency. Phase two provides roughly $750,000, sometimes more, to carry out further prototype development to expand on the results that you garnered in phase one. Win rates are roughly one in three. So your win rates uh, get much better in a phase two because you've weeded out a lot of the companies that were unable to prove feasibility in phase one. Phase three, the government steps out of the way at this point in terms of their funding. Okay, and it's up to you to commercialize the technology or products or services that you developed through your phase one and phase two efforts. And this is the ultimate goal of the SBIR and the STTR programs is commercialization. And commercialization is often a very difficult process for a technology focused company to work on. Okay. That's where the SBTDC can add some significant value is thinking about your technology focused business as a true revenue generating business. This is a list of the participating 11 agencies in the SBIR program. Noted next to some of the agencies are SBIR only and those are the agencies that do not participate in STTR. Don't assume that because the Department of Agriculture has agriculture in its name that their interests are on farming only. They have a wide, wide variety of interests including air pollution, erosion control, assisting with rural farming issues. Okay. Same goes with Department of Defense. They're simply not interested in tanks and guns. They have a very large section of their funding that goes toward medical research. Okay. So don't judge an agency by its name when you're attempting to figure out which of the agencies you'll be targeting when you're seeking funding. This is a pie chart that shows where that $2.5 billion comes from. Department of Defense puts in about half of that. So roughly $1.2 billion annually comes from Department of Defense. NIH puts in about a third with about $750 million. NASA is third. So in the news today we hear the government uh, spending almost trillions of dollars seemingly on a weekly basis. This slide just provides some perspectives on the fact that two $2.5 billion is still a lot of money. This is literally the largest pot of money in the world for funding early stage technologies. A billion seconds ago, it was 1959. A billion hours ago, we were all living in caves. And a billion dollars ago, it was only, not eight hours, but probably more like five minutes ago, the way the government's spending it. So $2 billion is a lot of money. We'll now discuss the critical differences between the SBIR and the STTR programs. STTR, Small Business Technology Transfer Program, the research and development project in your phase one must be a joint effort between the small business and the nonprofit research institution. Okay. The principal investigator in an STTR, his or her primary employment can be either from a research institution, aka university, or from the small business that gets the award. Okay. And we'll talk about these differences in more detail shortly. Some eligibility checkpoints that must be met to be able to participate in the SBIR and the SDTR programs. The small business that submits a proposal for a phase one must be organized as a for-profit U.S. business. Okay. Second checkpoint is that you must be 51% U.S. owned and independently operated. So you cannot be a subsidiary of a large corporation 
Okay, you must be 51% owned um, by individuals. The principal investigator's primary employment must be with the small business that gets the SBIR award. However, in an STTR, the principal investigator's primary employment can be with the small business or the research institution that's partnering with the business. So again, in an SBIR, the principal investigator must be 51% employed by the business that gets the award. And finally, the company that gets the award must be under 500 or fewer employees. Now you might be thinking that, well, the company with 498 people is going to be much more competitive than my company. My company is only two guys in a garage. Well, to quell that fear is the fact that roughly 50% of phase one awards go to companies with under nine people in size. So this is truly a small business funding program. Some important facts to remember. A lot of people will ask the question, does the principal investigator, the PI, is he or she required to have a PhD or a medical degree? And the answer is no. What the PI must bring to the table is expertise, technical expertise, that demonstrates that he or she can carry out the phase one project from a scientific and technical perspective. Third point, proposals or applications can be submitted to different agencies for similar work. So if you're lucky enough to find a solicitation that is similar in both the Department of Defense and National Institutes of Health, you could submit similar proposals, obviously using each agency's formats, but you can only win one of those awards if you were lucky enough to get awarded for both of them. So you can't win duplicative projects. On the flip side, you can submit multiple projects or phase one proposals for different work at both the same agency or at different agencies. And you can win more than one of those non-overlapping projects. Subcontracting or partnering. In scenario one, in an SBIR project, the small business that is awarded a phase one project can outsource up to 30% of the phase one effort. And that outsourcing can be done to any entity that you wish, another small business, a large business, a university, it doesn't matter. In phase two of an SBIR, up to 50% of that phase two work plan can be outsourced to any entity that you wish. Scenario two provides an overview of outsourcing for STTR. Here's the big difference between SBIR and STTR. In an STTR project, at least 30% of the phase one funds must be spent at a university or another research institution that's nonprofit. An additional 30% can be outsourced to that same partner or another small business, large business, doesn't matter. So that second 30%, there's some flexibility in who you outsource to leaving a minimum of 40% of the work to be done by the small business that was awarded the grant. Now subcontracting, although it can be difficult to identify partners that you may wish to subcontract with, subcontracting significantly increases the chances that you'll be funded. Okay. Subcontracting helps to shore up any weaknesses uh, that you may have in terms of lacking team members or lacking facilities or equipment that you at the small business may not have available to you. So subcontracting certainly is, is something that should be considered in both an SBIR and an SDTR. 
So at this point, you've decided that SBIR or STTR might be a strong fit for your funding needs. Your next step is to conduct a solicitation search. And a terrific website that you can uh, conduct that search at is zyn.com slash SBIR. This screen provides a screenshot of the zyn.com site. And noted in the red circle is a field called the Easy Solicitation Search. In this field, you can type in keywords for the technical area that you're looking to get a phase one proposal submitted for. And what it will do is it will pop up what we show on the next screen. But before we proceed, just note the other uh, interesting points on this, this uh, screen. The second link down from the red circled area is a link for searching of closed solicitations. So you can do a search for agency interests over the past couple of years. Okay. What this will do is provide you with an idea of, okay, which agency, DOD, National Science Foundation, Agriculture, which of those agencies had an interest in what I'm interested in doing over the past couple of years. And oftentimes, those interests from two years ago may reappear in the next solicitation release for that particular agency. So after you conduct your solicitation search, this is a potential finding uh, that you may encounter. The search engine will pull up the exact text of the particular solicitation that it believes is a match with what you're doing. So you can read through that. Next step is to communicate with the agency. And right there in the solicitation is the contact information of the technical point of contact at the agency that the solicitation was written by. A lot of people don't take this simple step of sending an email or giving a call to this person. Okay. And just my personal uh, experience, I believe you can you can increase your win rates from roughly one in nine to maybe one in six okay. by simply communicating with this program person, finding out what's been funded in the past that aligns with what this solicitation is for, what's gone well with those projects, what hasn't gone well, what exactly might they be looking for that is not described precisely in this solicitation. So getting as much information from that program person will certainly make you more competitive when you submit your proposal. This is an example of the calendar of solicitation releases and program uh, or project deadlines from some of the agencies. Okay. You can also gather this calendar from the ZYN.com site. So it's good once you have identified which agencies might be a fit with your interests, keep those, those dates uh, updated in your calendar. And note that each of the 11 agencies does follow a different calendar of solicitation release and uh, project closing deadlines. One important note, there are two schools of agencies. There are granting agencies and there are contract agencies. The major contracting agency is the Department of Defense. And I bring that up because when DOD publishes their solicitations, they first publish what they call their pre-solicitation announcement. As you can see in this example here, January 27th was DOD's STTR pre-solicitation announcement. That pre-solicitation is open for roughly four weeks. Okay. During that four-week window, you can communicate directly with that technical point of contact. Once that pre-solicitation window closes, the full-blown detailed solicitation is released. Once that full-blown detailed solicitation is released, you can no longer communicate one-on-one -on -one with the technical point of contact. 
There is a website, however, that you can ask questions, but responses that are generated in that website are able to be seen by everybody. So the other agencies that fall into the grant school of agencies like NIH, USDA, National Science Foundation, do not have that pre-solicitation uh, period. You can ask questions uh, from the date the solicitation opens until the date that the solicitation closes. Standard phase one process. Generally phase ones are roughly 20 to 25 pages in length. Unsolicited proposals are not accepted. Once you submit your proposal through the specific agency's website, it will generally take about four, five, six months, depending on the agency, to have that reviewed uh, by SBI or reviewers. Granting agencies, again, like NIH and National Science Foundation, USDA, their reviewers are outside government employees. So what they do is they put together a list of experts in the field of whatever your, their solicitation is about, and your proposal is sent out to those outside experts for review. Contract agencies, on the other hand, utilize in-house expertise to review your proposal. So DOD utilizes in-house DOD personnel to review your proposal. Yet another difference between granting and contracting agencies. Your phase one proposal is going to be reviewed based on its technical merit, primarily, your small business's qualifications, and very importantly, the commercial and societal benefit that could come out of phase one and phase two work for this technology. Another couple of months will go by and the agencies themselves will make the funding decisions. And you'll be notified as to whether you've been funded or not. So in a nutshell, it's going to take between six to nine months between the time that you submit your proposal and the time that you get the yes or no as to whether you've been funded or not. So certainly this is a long turnaround time uh, that a lot of small businesses will have difficulty dealing with. But it is the federal government. There are a lot of proposals being submitted, and it just is a, a, uh, a fact that you must, you must live with in this program. No matter if you're funded or not, you'll be provided written review commentary if your proposal was reviewed by experts. A number of agencies will allow the small business to resubmit your phase one proposal at least one time in the next solicitation release that they have. So once you get that written review commentary, you can sit down with an SBTDC um, technology development group staff member and we can help you rewrite your phase one proposal so that it incorporates those scientific review comments that the reviewers provided. In North Carolina, since 1983, the SBIR program has certainly had a significant economic impact. Roughly $400 million has been doled out to North Carolina-based companies through the SBIR and the STTR programs, through roughly 1,100 Phase I awards and about 425 Phase II awards. There have been almost 400 awardees of those awardees, roughly nine have become publicly traded, Cree being a, a, probably the biggest example of that publicly traded firm. About 18 M&A deals, merger and acquisition deals, have been carried out. 148 companies have gone on to garner VC funding. And about 1,660 patents have been filed from those companies. In North Carolina, 
North Carolina's SBIR activities has risen to just over $40 million uh, in recent years. And that's a five times increase since 2001. From 1999 through uh, today, there's been a tenfold increase in Department of Defense SBIRs. And recent data suggests that North Carolina award rates are on average about one in five to one in six, whereas the national average win rates are about one in eight. So a lot of that has to do with uh, our assistance, our education and outreach efforts uh, and helping you to be more competitive and to help you get over the, the relatively simple uh, pitfalls that most companies run into as they submit a phase one proposal. So the SBTDC, we're here to guide you through the SBIR process from beginning, such as this presentation of introductory information, as well as going down the road to help you further strategize and to help you develop a strong proposal. We carry out one-on-one -on -one counseling, so we'll sit down with you either by, by phone or in person to discuss your needs, what your funding needs are, what your timing is, etc. NCSBIR.org provides a lot of information that you can follow up with after this presentation, such as tips and tricks for developing a strong proposal, our newsletter archives, etc. So feel free to, to uh, review that site. One of the most important things that I believe we can do for companies that are submitting proposals is carrying out phase one proposal reviews. Once you draft your phase one proposal, you can submit that proposal to me directly via Word document at least two weeks or 14 days before the federal deadline. Submit that to us and we'll provide you with written commentary on steps that you can take to make your proposal more competitive. Now we're not going to be reviewing your proposal from a technical standpoint. We're going to be reviewing it from that business standpoint and that flow standpoint. Does it make sense? We're business experts. We're not necessarily technical experts in the area that you're developing your proposal around. So on that note, I would also suggest that you submit your proposal to technical experts for technical commentary using people that you're familiar with uh, in your field of, of uh, expertise. We do a number of conferences and workshops uh, similar to this presentation today, uh, all the way through full day to two day proposal preparation workshops where we bring in uh, outside consultants to help teach uh, how to write strong phase ones and phase twos. After you've gotten an SBIR phase one, you must start thinking about commercialization. Our technology counselors and myself can assist with providing you a strong business uh, education so that you can further develop your commercialization plan and your product development plans. This is a screenshot of our monthly SBIR newsletter that we develop and distribute electronically. So a lot of updated information is provided through this newsletter. And if you're interested in being on the distribution list for this newsletter, you can send me an email. This is an, an example of our training series. We provide webinars, which covers information that's included in this session. Uh, we do a number of live sessions uh, where we bring in experts, and again, phase one, phase two proposal training experts, uh, as well as meet the expert series, which are more focused on uh, specific topics that can be of interest to uh, phase one and phase two awardees, such as accounting, budgeting, intellectual property, etc. The Department of Commerce in 2005 put forth a program 
called the Incentive Program and the Matching Funds Program, otherwise known as the North Carolina One Small Business Funding Program. Within the Department of Commerce, the Board of Science and Technology administers both of these programs. First, the Incentive Program, in a nutshell, provides up to $3,000 to help you cover the costs of simply writing and submitting a Phase 1 SBIR or STTR proposal. They will reimburse eligible companies for up to 50% of their proposal preparation costs, again, up to $3,000. So you must justify that you've spent $6,000 and they'll match that up to $3,000. Now to be eligible for this, you must be a North Carolina based company. You do not have to be incorporated in, in North Carolina. You simply must be based here or headquartered here. Okay. Second program is the matching funds program. The matching funds program provides up to $75,000 as a match to any phase one that's awarded to a North Carolina headquartered company. So again, the North Carolina company must be obviously based here in North Carolina and the work in the phase one proposal must be done here in North Carolina to be eligible for the match. 75% of that match is paid at the time that you receive your phase one notification from, from the federal government. The final 25% of the state match comes at the time that you submit your phase two proposal. You do not have to win the phase two proposal, you just have to submit one. You can receive one of these matches and one of these incentives per year, up to a total of five per the life of the company. Some final comments. Both the SBIR and the STTR programs 2.5 billion and 150 million dollars respectively, certainly provide significant amounts of funds, specifically set aside for funding small innovative firms. They're funding high-risk projects, projects that really nobody else in their right mind would fund because they are such high risk at this early stage. There's a high risk of failure in, in most phase one projects. And the government has stepped up since 1983 and has provided this funding to help these high risk projects get off the ground. A major benefit of the programs is that the intellectual property that's developed through the phase one and the phase two stays with the business. The program provides valuable credibility Companies that have gotten phase ones and phase twos are looked at much more highly by partners, by manufacturers, by follow-on funding entities. And finally, both programs offer a relatively simple or simplified route to garnering SBIR funding. Now keep in mind that SBIR is only two and a half percent of the agency's extramural R&D budgets. So that means there's another 97.5% out there. However, universities, large corporations, they're all going after that 97.5%, whereas this 2.5% is specifically for you at the small business level. This is my contact information. Again, I'm located in our Chapel Hill office. My email address is sbir at sbtdc.org and phone number is 919-962-8297.